I'm always looking for unwanted synthesizers and drum machines, whether they're functional or faulty. I hope to save as many of these fantastic machines and keep them working and making music for as long as possible. This is my synth quest. In this episode of Synth Quest, we're checking out the Pollard Syndrome Analog Drum Synthesizer. Pollard Syndrome was the first commercially available electronic drum synthesizer, which debuted in 1977. The Syndrome was developed over 10 years by Joe Pollard. He, along with David Williamson, sought the help of electronics whiz Mark Barton, who was known for designing and building his own circuits. The trio established Pollard Industries, and with the help of Don Stone, the first Syndrome units were manufactured. Within 24 months of the first prototype, Pollard Industries was acquired as a division of RDSI, thus moving its manufacturing facility and becoming Pollard International. The Syndrome system consists of a drum module, drum pad and foot switch unit. The drum module produces programmable synthesized tones that are triggered by the piezoelectric drum pads. Initially Pollard released the single module and the quad module. The quad module had four single module circuits in one unit. Later they produced the twin module, housing two independent, single module circuits in one unit. Even with units with the same model number, there were many cosmetic variations among them, such as different screen prints, different knobs, and different side panels. There are major differences on the quad units as well. Quad units produced under Pollard Industries have a different control layout, different connector layout, and a slightly bulkier build compared to the Pollard International quad units. Even the drum pads had differences, such as pads with and without textured grooves on the underside. The standard drum pad has a woven Kevlar Duraline superhead. The heads are set in a solid polycarbonate shell, which also has a strong mounting socket. There are four circular holes on the bottom, which allow the user to unscrew the shell using a custom paddle key. The pad is connected to the module via a quarter inch jack socket. On the back of the module, we have quarter inch jack sockets for the output, pedal control, drum pad input, and DC power supply input. The twin and quad modules also have mixed outputs for sending to a PA speaker, plus headphone outputs. The quad has a special 5-pin socket to connect the unit to up to four pads using a special breakout cable. The module itself is a simple unit generating analog waveforms with pitch and envelope controls. The main tone consists of one of three waveforms, square, triangle, or sine. These waveforms can be tuned over 12 octaves using the coarse slider, and just over an octave using the fine slider. The duration of the main tone is controlled by the tone sustain slider on the far left, and covers a range from 0 to 15 seconds of sustain time. The selected waveform can be modulated by a pitch bender control in the sweep section, that pitches the tone up or down each time it's triggered, and the pitch range can be adjusted using the slider below it. There's also an LFO in the vibrato section that can modulate the main tone using square, triangle, or sawtooth waveforms. The LFO rate and spread can be adjusted using the sliders below. The snare is produced by a self-contained noise circuit that can be switched on and off. The snare has three selectable modes. Snare 1, which has a preset short decay. Snare 2, which enables the snare sustain to be adjusted by the slider beneath. And off, which removes the snare tone altogether. Both the snare and the main tone can be played in unison on all Syndrome models. In the top left corner we have a drum pad sensitivity control and an on off switch for the optional foot switch controller. With the pedal switch on, the foot controller can adjust the main tone's pitch. Below the switch is the main volume slider.
If you have the opportunity to grab one of these, I'd recommend you have the sliders and switches tested or cleaned as they can be in a bad state after a few decades. You may even want to clean or replace the jack sockets for proper contact between your module and drum pad. If you're getting just the module, without the original pads, you can easily use any modern electronic drum pad to trigger it. I've noticed that some don't have the same dynamic output as the original syndrome pads, but it's not that bad and I prefer to preserve my original drum pads anyway. Alternatively, you can use a piezo contact clip and secure it to a pair of drumsticks. If your module comes with pads, you'll probably find foam that has disintegrated on the inside that will fall out through the holes underneath. Be sure to clean this completely. Finally, check the casing for any fractures and cracks. This could be a sign that they're ready for display only, rather than damaging them any further through continued use. It's great to own a piece of electronic drum history, and the Pollard Syndrome has a proud place in the Mad Fame studio. Although this unit in no way achieves sonic realism or drum roll accuracy, it definitely stirs the imagination and offers a tonal palette true to its analog DNA. If you have any unwanted synths or drum machines, then you can donate them to SynthQuest for use in a future episode. Click the Madfame contact link in the description below to get in touch. Be sure to like and subscribe, and click the notification bell so you don't miss out on the next episode of SynthQuest.